Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here, and in this episode of Zig in Death, we're going to be talking about the for loop. And to start off, I'm creating here an array with uh, six elements from 0 to 5. And for loops can be used to iterate or over uh, arrays uh, or slices, as we're going to be uh, seeing further down uh, ranges also. Um, here we have an example of a for loop that iterates over the array. Okay. Uh, here we are capturing each of the elements uh, on each of the iterations of the loop. Uh, we use uh, this uh, syntax here with the pipes. And uh, if it's just a single statement like we're doing right here, um, you don't need the, the curly braces. You could have the curly braces uh, like this. Um, but it's uh, it's not mandatory if it's only one statement uh, that you're going to be executing on each iteration. Uh, and uh, here we basically print out uh, each of the items with a space separating them. And then we print out a new line for uh, separation. Okay. Here uh, we're demonstrating uh, that we can do the same with a slice. We're, we're uh, basically taking a slice here. And uh, we're uh, basically just doing the same thing, printing out each of the items. Here we have an example of uh, a situation where you want the, the index of each of the items, okay? So uh, basically we are taking advantage of the fact that the zig for loop can loop over more than one object, okay? The first object that we have is the array itself. And after the comma, we have a, a, an unbounded range here, starting at zero and uh, going off into infinity. But actually, this will be turned into a range that basically goes up to the length of the array. Because when we are uh, iterating over more than one object, as we will discuss uh, in a further example, um, they all have to have the same length. Okay, That's a requirement for the multi-object looping. So since we have two objects here in, in the condition, we have to have two uh, variables here in the capture, separated by commas, okay? And uh, basically we are then uh, printing out uh, that index and the, the item itself, okay? And speaking of the multi-object for loop, uh, here we have a specific example. Of, uh, we are looping here over three slices uh, of the same array. And we have the three captures here, A, B, and C, okay? And um, here we are uh, using the curly braces for a little more uh, readability since it, the, the, the loop line here is getting pretty long. It's important to note that these captures, these, these are uh, treated as constant variables, okay? You can't modify them. We're going to be seeing uh, further down how to do that if you need to modify. Here we have an example of looping over just a, a, a range. And here the range cannot be unbounded. It has to have the ending, uh, uh, the ending item here. Since it's basically, uh, in, in this case, where the range itself is what we're iterating over. Um, these would be the elements uh, the, or, or, or the items that we're iterating uh, uh, and obtaining in each of the uh, each of the iterations, and uh, it's uh, it would be from three to uh, ten exclusive. It would not include the ten, so it would be from three to nine. Okay. Um, next up, we have an example of uh, how you can use break and continue. Okay. Both of these uh, keywords can be used within a for loop. Continue will uh, immediately start the next iteration and will not execute the, the, the rest of the body of the loop. And break will break out of the loop immediately and will not execute the rest of the body either. Okay. Here we see an example of a labeled for loop. Okay. Labels, as, as we saw previously with blocks, a label is basically an identifier followed by a colon, okay? And once you establish a label for the for loop, you can use it with continue or break. Here we are uh, showing an example of how to break here uh, with the outer label. When you're going to use the label with continue or break, 
you're going to put the colon before the identifier okay and this will uh, basically break out of the outer loop not just this inner loop okay if you don't specify a label here it would just break out of the the, the innermost closest uh, loop okay that contains the break and the same it goes for the continue okay as i mentioned before if uh, a case arises where you have to modify the items as you iterate over them um, basically what you need to do is first of all the the array or the slice or, or the elements that you're going to be iterating over they have to be themselves um, non-const so you can modify them and with a with a pointer to uh, that uh, data structure you can then uh, prefix here the capture with a, with a star an asterisk and that basically will give you a pointer to that item and now you can modify it via that pointer as we see here we're dereferencing the pointer and multiplying it by two and assigning it to the item itself so this uh, mutates those items in the array okay and then we print them out so it's pretty simple um, to, to have a loop where you can modify the items okay and now uh, we're going to see an example of how we can uh, use a for loop as an expression. And this is a really flexible and powerful mechanism that Zig offers. Um, here we're going to see an example of how we can use it. If, say, you have, uh, as you see here, we have an array of optional U8s, okay? Say that you're receiving this data. And, and um, the, the rules uh, of how to handle the data basically stipulate that the, the elements will uh, be uh, terminated once you arrive at the first null, okay? So basically you know that after that first null, everything else is going to be null. So that's basically the, like a sentinel, as we've been seeing in, in, in other cases. Uh, but here, instead of being an explicit sentinel uh, array, it's just a normal array, and we know, uh, based on the knowledge that we have of the data, that once we arrive at the first null, uh, then the, the valid items are over, okay? So we can use a for loop as an expression precisely to obtain a slice from this array of just the items that, that are uh, up, up to the first null, okay? but not including. So we're defining this constant here that says just nums, okay? And we're using a for loop over the array and also uh, an unbounded uh, range here for the index. And what we're gonna do is, uh, since each of the elements is an optional, we do uh, an equality test on null here. And if it is null, then we know that we reach uh, that index that's one past the the final uh, valid element so we break here and uh, we can break with a value okay and this is a part of, of, of the semantics of using the for loop as a, an expression when we break we we have to pass a value because that's what that's the value that's going to be equal to or what the for loop is going to return okay so in this case if we reach an item that's null we can then slice the array up to that index okay and since the slicing operation is uh, exclusive on the upper bound we're going to obtain a slice precisely up to but not including the first null okay and if that never happens then uh, that this uh, the for loop as an expression has an else clause which it will execute so the else will only execute if uh, we never break from the body of the for loop. If we break, the else will not execute. But if we don't break, the else executes. And here what we do is we produce a slice of the whole array, okay? Because uh, the, the, uh, either, either of these outcomes have to produce the same data type. Since the break is producing a slice here, then the else has to produce a slice also, okay? So uh, with that, uh, we can obtain uh, a slice of the items up to the first null, and if there is no null in the array, 
we just obtain a slice of the whole array. Okay, so this is a pretty useful idiom that we can we can uh, take advantage of in Zig. Okay, and here we print out the array, so the the just nums slice uh, to see what we got. Okay, so here uh, um, we see that the just nums only includes the zero, the one, and the two, and uh, th those are the items that are just before the first null. Okay, so um, I hope that you find this uh, useful. Uh, do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.